Hey, hey, what's going on everybody? Alex with you here again as usual. Thank you for dropping by for yet another chess related video. I think it's been like a week, maybe a week and a half since I've been able to post one of these, but um, the reason why I haven't posted more frequently is because I've been waiting for the Millennium E1 board and by this time I was anticipating that the board was going to arrive and I was going to have enough time to test it out and see what the board's like and everything, but unfortunately the shipping on the board's been taking like forever so a word of caution to people that are out there looking for boards or chess chess merchandise whatnot be sure to get an idea as far as how long it's gonna take to ship to wherever you are because in the united states here it seems like maybe i got a little spoiled because whenever i order from like house of staunton for example i'll get my order within like a day or two days sometimes it's been like next day Whenever I order from India, however, sometimes it takes two, three weeks, but I know like if I order from Chess Bazaar, a lot of times it does take longer. So at least I already anticipate, but sometimes like even if you order through Amazon and I know for a lot of people that have ordered through Amazon, you know that the Amazon shipping is usually pretty quick. So I ordered my Millennium Me One board through Amazon and it was like three weeks gone by, four weeks or something. and. I'm still sort of waiting around for the board to come. I'm not even sure if it's gonna come. So if you're ordering chess sets, or you know, just make sure you kind of have an idea as far as when it's going to arrive, especially if it's a gift for somebody, because that's important. You want the gift to arrive before you, before you need to give the gift. So that's kind of where that stands. So I think by this time I've ordered a couple of other interesting things that I'm super excited to show you guys and they are going to be arriving probably by Monday or Tuesday next week. So I'll be able to, without, without delay, be able to show you some really cool new chess sets. I'm really, really excited about that. Uh, as I've said before, um, you know, I, I do realize that a lot of these chess companies like House of Staunton, Staunton Castle, Chess Bazaar, um, Royal Chess Mall, they've got some excellent chess sets, very high quality things that I mean, quite honestly, I'd wish that I'd have the opportunity to show them all to you. I wish that I would, you know, even if I didn't get a part-time job at like Hasa Staten or somewhere so I can literally go in there and film everything for you. Unfortunately, that's not the case and I don't get, you know, I don't get these chess sets piling up in front of my front door for me to review. So as they come, I review them, but you know, I'm hoping that in the near future, I might be able to, to be able to review and show you guys more chess sets more frequently so that you guys can marvel at these things and at least gain a better appreciation of some of these high quality, you know, craftsmanship. But anyways, that's not what the video is going to be on today. I wanted to kind of talk to you guys. This video is going to be more or less like a discussion opener something that we can kind of think about and sort of share our ideas together. But um, here's my idea. There's times in my day, and I'm sure there's times in your day where possibly you're not doing anything. However, those same times might be the times when you are required not to do anything or required to sit there. And it's sort of these loopholes. Let me explain a little bit better. Uh, when my kids were smaller, so like when my when my little girl was probably like one years old, she used to have these sort of uh, things where if you if you walked out of the room and she's in the crib, she would start crying. So I would have to, I would have to sit in the room in the dark and wait for about 30, 40 minutes, literally right by the crib, because that's the way that it was. You know, everybody has their 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 moments. Uh, to literally she would kind of sense that I was in the room and she, she would fall asleep in about 30 40 minutes I would just kind of crawl out quietly and there we go So that 30 40 minutes was sort of more or less like a loophole in my time where I what I usually used to do at night as I would stretch I would just sit there and stretch and do all kinds of stretching exercises because I mean what else can you do in 30 40 minutes stare at the ceiling but but there are times even like now, and I'm sure if you kind of think about the way that your day or your week goes by, I'm sure you can find those times that reoccur regularly where, for example, on certain days of the week, I have to go and pick up my daughter, but I have to go to the school and I have to stay in the car line for approximately uh, an hour and a half. Uh, with my son so we sit there and and that's a loophole that I really can't do much about I cannot 
I cannot change it. I have to be there. And I'm sure that there are loopholes in your schedule where basically you find yourself. And so the, so the topic sort of merges into if for us chess enthusiasts, how do we go about finding the best way that we can utilize those loopholes to play more chess if that's what we want to do? So when it comes to playing chess in like the car, for example, because I sit in a, in a sedan, it's relatively, if I had a bigger car, maybe things would be different, but I sit in a sedan, I don't have a lot of room. How do I go about playing chess? Well, the easiest way for me to be able to play chess probably would be uh, just use, utilizing my phone like this. However, even though my smartphone is somewhat big screen here, it's got, it's a Samsung S10. I think the phone is like three, four years old, something like that. I don't, I'm a creature of habit. I don't replace electronics that often. But anyways, um, I don't like playing chess on it. I gotta be honest with you. I don't like playing chess on my phone. The screen is, it's big enough screen, but it's like, the board itself is somewhat tiny and and even though it's it's tiny but it's big enough for me to be able to play the game there's some situations where i just for, first of all i the size of the screen is too too small for me to be able to have a serious game agree with me if you feel the same way or disagree with me you can comment below let me know what your thought process is but i feel like at least on these smaller phones, if the board is too small, I just don't take the game seriously. I need the board to be slightly bigger. And therefore, another thing on the phone is for some reason, I don't know if you guys have that, but whenever I play on my phone, a lot of times what ends up happening, like chess.com is, I'll get connection drop, dropping, I guess, connection while playing chess.com. It's really, really frustrating or can be pretty frustrating when you're in the middle of the game and all of a sudden, even though your phone says you have connection, all of a sudden on chess.com, it's like you get those little bars at the top right next to your, your name and the bars start to go down. And then every time you try to make a move, it says, oh, wait, resyncing, connection dropped. And you have like two minutes left of your game and your opponent's basically waiting you out because you can't move because your connection is dropping because something's going on with your device or whatnot. I noticed that on my phone, I get that a lot. Um, my personal favorite probably playing on something bigger at home would be on my Mac. Um, my Mac, I think it's like a 15 inch. It's not super big laptop, it's a MacBook Pro and I find that the screen size more or less ideal for playing, uh, you know, for playing chess games. I have a bigger screen, I have a 32 inch that I, I edit the videos on. And I find that the bigger the board is, if the, big, the board is about this big on the screen sometimes, it's a little bit harder. It's gotta be like a little bit smaller so that you're, you sort of have this ideal square footage on which to play. So I feel like, I feel like for at home, MacBook Pro or like a laptop, more or less ideal. Um, bigger screen, kind of harder for me to follow. Another thing is uh, an iPad. An iPad is also a great way if, if your iPad, but here's the thing about iPads. If your iPad is, you're taking it with you somewhere, Unlike your cellular phone, a lot of times your iPad only works off of Wi-Fi. And if I were to take my, my, my iPad to the school or wherever I am, if I'm not connected with the iPad, then I can't play online. And you can still play offline games like against AI or something, but it's, if you wanted to play online, you'd have to have some kind of a hotspot or something like that uh, going so that would work for you better. Lastly, um, I want to talk about bringing a board with you. Okay, so this is kind of my specialty, I guess you could call, because as you guys know, I, I'm sort of, you know, I've seen a lot of different AI boards. You can bring uh, a small wooden board. We've seen different fold-out boards. We've seen things that you can put on your lap. Uh, maybe like get a smaller wooden board almost like an analysis board. You can put it on your lap if you're sitting in the car and then you can put your pieces up and you can be playing the game. While you are on your phone, I suppose you could be sort of mirroring the game or you can bring something like one of these awesome things, which is the, the Chestnut Air. And I feel like if you were to be connected to the, to the phone while sitting there in the car, yeah, that's pretty good. I, th I feel like that's not a bad outcome. You have a good battery on this thing and you could put it on your lap and you'd probably be fine. 
Um, so it, as far as most of my boards that I have, the Chestnut Air would be something that I'd probably bring with me to the car to play because uh, it fits on, on the lap pretty pretty easily. It's not super heavy. And because it's it doesn't fold or anything like, like the Square Off Pro we've seen it folds and, and everything, so you can't really put it on your lap. This is fine. You turn it on. There's, uh, you know, of course, there's still the issue with if your phone is dropping connection like in chess.com, like mine does, maybe I need a new phone, I don't know. Um, then you'd still probably see the dropping of the connection on the board itself. I'm not really sure, but I'm actually going to plan to test out some of these boards in the car next time I go. But I feel like theoretically, the Chestnut Air is a pretty good, pretty good choice. I would, I would, I would stick to Chestnut Air as a board that I could, you know, take with me. The Chessup board that we've seen before several times is also a pretty good option, in my opinion. I think it's a really, really good. It's one of my favorite AI chess boards. And I think you get a little bit of a slightly bigger square footage as far as a little bit bigger space to play on. And, and pieces are a little bit better overall uh, size-wise and everything's pretty good. However, the Chessup Air board, uh, you have to calibrate it uh, before playing. Usually that's what they will recommend. You have to calibrate, and when you're calibrating the board, you, you have to put it on a flat surface, like a table, um, maybe a wooden floor, but mostly a table. That's where people expect that you're gonna be playing these things. And then you turn it on and you take your phone and, you, and then you go through the calibration process. So, because it has some kind of a, uh, I think it has some kind of a equilibrium device inside, and the equilibrium device is what, what the responsibility of that device is that to make sure that it senses the position of all your pieces and the, the overall sensing of the board. That's what makes the chest up. Like when you press on the individual pieces, like and everything lights up. In order for everything to light up properly, you've got to calibrate the board. Okay. Uh, I am not really sure. I'll, I'll go ahead and test it out. I'll let you guys know if I'm having any issues, if I keep it on my lap, but I, I suspect that with the calibration being a little bit maybe overly sensitive, we may or may not have any issues, but I, you know, I'd be, I'd be excited to test these things out for you. Um, the bigger boards, for example, the DGT Centaur, that would be one of the boards that I'd probably also wanna take with me, but as you guys have seen in that video, and if you haven't seen in that video, be sure to go check it out, but the, the board is gonna be bigger and it's, uh, it's, I wouldn't call it flimsy, but it's, it's thin. It's, it's kind of thin-ish on the thin side. Uh, personally, I think it would be too big for a board that you would put on your lap, in my opinion. It's just, it's, it's way too big. It's a great board if you want to play it on somewhere like at a tournament or just if you have a table, a large table, and just put it on there and that's fine. And like I said, maybe in like a bigger SUV or something where there's more space, you could probably find a way to maybe install some kind of a little table, a side table where you can just put any kind of board on there. But I'm just kind of talking in my situation where the car is kind of small and I'm, you know, figuring out ways to, to do it. But yeah, I wouldn't necessarily at this time bring the DGT uh, Centaur board. The DGT e-board, uh, that requires a little bit more like, uh, more connectivity and really it, it's just, it's, it's more than you would probably want to bring with you on a casual like car ride or something like that. So that's more of kind of a, a higher end professional board as you guys have seen in that video. Um, the Millennium King board would be pretty awesome in my opinion because it's, uh, it's not super big and it pretty much the board itself comes with everything that it needs for you to be able to enjoy it. And you don't have to connect it online unless you wanted to connect it online, then you'd need that special separate link. But the problem with the Millennium King board is that it requires a separate battery block in order to operate. So you'd have to purchase that, which is fine if you do, but that's gonna set you back another $150 or so, maybe a hundred if you get it on sale. So, but if you do that, I feel like that's a, that would be a pretty good option if you wanted to play against like offline, if you wanted to play against the AI. That might be something I don't wanna test out too. But as of right now, without having like a battery backup for the Millennium King or anything else, I'd probably say that um, it's between the chest up and the chestnut air at this time. As far as if I wanted to bring a physical board with me to the car, I probably I'll probably choose the chestnut air. I might try out the chestnut uh, the chest up and and see how that goes. But uh, 
I'm just kind of interested to, 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 to hear your guys' thoughts on it, to hear you guys' comments, like, uh, what would you bring in that particular situation? But I also wanted to expand this because I do realize that, you know, if you guys are listening to me, you, you'd be saying, well, Alex, not everybody has an hour and a half that they have to spend sitting inside of their car. I do realize that. And that kind of transitions me from, from my discussion to basically uh, thinking about other situations in which, uh, in which you guys might find yourself where once again you have to spend time maybe waiting for somebody or not really doing anything that you could be potentially playing chess how what is your experience what do you do like do you just go to your phone if you want to play uh do you just sit there like what what is your take uh personally like i said if, if my phone was a little bit bigger or if i had a larger uh a larger board that would be pretty cool uh, then I would probably uh, reserve resort to that uh, like maybe like an iPad or something that could connect online by itself That will probably be a better option for me But at this time I probably say that I, I, I choose a, one of these two boards uh, As my go-to so hopefully by the time I'll show you guys my next video We'll hopefully have some some new chess sets and new chess boards So stay tuned my friends have a wonderful weekend and stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay? Bye-bye.